Hello, hello, welcome back. I'm getting quite a few requests uh, for analysis of specific stocks lately and thank you for keeping them coming. But please be a little bit um, patient because I have quite a few on my backlog and uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of time to analyze those. Now, for this video, we're going to analyze Domino's Pizza, a very, very well-known chain. You can find it, of course, in the US and pretty much all over the place. I mean, definitely have seen it in many countries in Europe as well. Now, this one has been going down 34% already, and we're going to, that's the one year high, from its one year high, and we're going to be examining the details of the financials of the company. Now, before we begin, let me just uh, tell you that I'm pretty much daily working on the tool, and so uh, I keep fixing things, I keep, uh, I keep analyzing against uh, other well-known uh, uh, providers and making sure that the data is uh, precise. Now, here, every now and then I'm finding some uh, bugs, of course, that I'm fixing. And um, one of the things that I fixed uh, lately was the outstanding shares issue in case there was a multiple class uh, stock. So this was a little bit of a, a thing that was happening with uh, a limited amount of, of stocks, really. The ones that have, uh, that have multiple class shares that are similar in, uh, in structure and um, price for the most part. And so, for instance, this issue was happening uh, for Google, in which uh, the discounted cash flow model will be a little bit uh, um, elevated. It would actually give uh, better values than what they actually were, even though Google remains a, a pretty, pretty much a strong buy right now. But I have fixed this issue, and uh, pretty much uh, every day I'm, I'm testing against, uh, as I mentioned, and I'm testing against uh, well-known providers just to see whether there's some sort of a bug of some sort, and um, trying all sorts of different stocks, uh, making sure that um, no issues uh, happen. Uh, however, yeah, if there is a bug, I'm always attentive. I'm going to be fixing everything I'm seeing because I do want to make sure that the tool is as precise as possible and uh, as good as possible because I'm using it myself as well, uh, as well as the Patreons that are already uh, looking at it and working with it. So thanks again for the support and uh, thank you for understanding. I mean, uh, I hope I had an army of analysts behind me, but I don't. <laughs> I'm just working on this alone. Uh, so what's going on right now with this company? The period issue of the company is sitting at 27.9 over here. It's actually down from what it used to be. Yet its price to free cash flow ratio is a little bit down from what it was, which is a good side. It's a nice side. And um, still, it's a little bit elevated, but better than what it used to be. Now, a good thing is that the outstanding shares have been going down from what they were at about uh, 43 almost million to down to 30, 36 right now. And the free cash flow to total liabilities is slightly elevated, meaning that the company has uh, quite a few liabilities when compared to last year's free cash flow. It would take them about 10.5 years to repay all their total liabilities. They are not exactly very solvent. It's a little bit elevated. The five-year revenue growth is uh, increasing, which is always nice to see, with the net income growth and the free cash flow growth. Total equity growth going down, though, that's interesting, and it's negative and uh, going down from negative levels as well. All right. So the debt to equity ratio is, of course, negative because of negative equity. And uh, the return on equity is negative again because of negative equity, of course. So that's not great thing, a great thing to see. A little bit of a dividend that the company pays with a low uh, payout ratio, so that's fine. Totally able to fulfill that, the company. Let's take a look at the statements here. Let's see why their balance sheet is affected that much. 2.7 uh, billion in revenue, 4.3 in 2021. So there's a little bit of an increase here. And um, in terms of the net income, from 200 million to 500 million over here. An okay increase, not insane, almost doubling it in uh, five years though, so not bad. And uh, what about their balance sheet? What's going on here? I'm interested in this one. So let's take a look at the total assets of the company from 800 million to 1.6 billion. But look at the liabilities, 3.5, 3.9, 4.7, 4.8, 5.8, constantly increasing. And uh, the assets are actually probably not increasing at that same level really, right? Yeah, definitely not. So the liabilities are increasing more than the assets, it looks like. You can kind of see it in the percentages as well. Uh, apart from this one, which is 52%, uh, this is like 21, 20 here, and this is like 6, 13, 8. Yeah, it looks like we're having quite a few liabilities here. Let's take a look at the, what these liabilities are. So liabilities are basically current liabilities and non-current liabilities. 
The current ones are the ones that are fulfillable in the next 12 months. The non-current ones are the more long-term ones. And as you see, these ones are the ones that are the thorn in the company. And this is non-current non deferred tax liabilities, pretty much. Interesting. So it's tax liabilities, really. Um, oh, this is actually millions. That's very little. My bad. The long-term debt is the thing. 5.2 billion is the big thing. So the company has a lot of long-term debt here that keeps increasing. That's a little bit too much that I would want from a company of this sort. Yeah. Especially when they are not making good enough cash flow as we examine compared to the total liabilities. Because that's important. Because they could be using it for leverage, but look at the free cash flow. 560 million here, while the um, total liabilities were sitting at 5.8 billion. And as we already examined, this would be about 10 years of free cash flow to allocate this free cash flow in order to pay all the total liabilities here. That's a little bit too much, more than I would want it to be. So I don't like that. Let's go back and take a look again at the cash flow statement. Uh, again, the, five, the 510 million, what are those about? Uh, they make uh, 654 in terms of their operating activities cash flow. Okay. And in terms of investing cash flow, this is in the negative, which is a good thing, of course. Company is purchasing some investments and uh, paying a little bit of a dividend here and uh, generally speaking some repayment of debt but extra debt here more debt than actually than what was repaid okay this is becoming a little bit of too much debt uh, for my liking some extra cash here not much cash as you'll see especially compared to the debt and the free cash flow we already examined yeah i'm not a big fan of the debt uh, structure of the company right now especially when they are not making good return on equity, for example, because if they were using the debt to grow, then maybe that's a good thing. But over here, we're looking at negative equity, negative return on equity and negative equity, equity as well. So that's not a good thing. Yep. So let's take a look at uh, the stock evaluation tool. The stock evaluation tool, uh, we're going to be using the averages for the most part here. Let's just go 5, 8 and 12, pretty much the, all the averages uh, that you can see here. Let's use those. And uh, net income margin, it's about the same every year. Let's go 10, 11, and 11.5 uh, maybe. Free cash flow margin, again, about the same every year. We're going to go 90, 100, and 110. Annual return of 13% is what makes sense. And we hit calculate. And uh, yeah, as I, was, as I would expect, this is a little bit off from what we'd like it to be. Uh, this, uh, these are kind of, uh, I'd say, optimistic projections here. And still we are below the current price. So this, this is now not a buy for me, especially following its uh, debt structure, the way they have quite some debt and the way that uh, they seem to be increasing this one. I don't like to see this thing going on for a while, especially when their equity growth is going negative as well. So they have negative equity, little cash on, uh, on the balance sheet and uh, not enough free cash flow to even pay total liabilities uh, for the next 10 years if they wanted to. So this is a, a company that's very debt leveraged and um, this is risk. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I would be willing to take this kind of risk to tell you the truth. So probably I would stay away from this company, especially at the current price. Maybe even at a much lower price, I, I would be willing to buy much, much lower than what it is to tell you the truth, just to have a little bit of a, um, an extra in case, uh, because I have a lot of risk for this one lots of debt going on so yeah to me this is probably not a company that i would uh, follow through and buy right now it ha it would have to give me a, a fantastic price really fantastic price i don't know maybe 150 or something of that sort to for me to potentially think about taking this the risk but right now i think it's a little bit too risky for my liking thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed thanks for the suggestion i hope it helps a little bit and uh, yeah please leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe if you're not a subscriber and uh, I'd love to see you around. In the meantime, take a look at uh, this video that I made earlier. And this one I'm in this one I'm discussing Adobe and whether they are an interesting add to a portfolio addition. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.